Okay, I guess I'm uh, I'm on now. Okay, and I'll put my timer up. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, if there's something wrong, please let me know. Okay, does that look all right? Can I get a thumbs up from somebody? Okay, thank you very much. All right, so uh, welcome to creating the English Gym Digital Workbook in Zangango. My name is John uh, Carl. I write under the pen name John. Charles, but it's me, same person. Um, this is actually for um, anybody who is a writer or an author or a publisher. Um, uh, so uh, I know a lot of people from different countries. So this, this particular textbook is for Japanese university students. But if you are a writer or if you are a, a publishing company or some kind of content creator, this I think there'll be some interesting uh, tidbits in here for you. Okay, so tonight I'll talk about um, a why and how I created the workbook on this platform. And as you just saw from Paul's uh, demonstration, it has um, amazing features, right? So um, as I tell the story, um, I'll talk about um, how the form of the workbook followed the function. And in this case, um, function means that basically the user experience, the experience of the teacher, and also the experience of the student, because I'm, I'm approaching this as a as a content creator. Okay. Um, I do have a link to the slideshows. I'm not sure if anyone is interested in it, but <laughs> it's a rather long link, but I'll copy that and I'll put that in the chat if I can. Let's see. And let me get everybody. It's a very long link, so that's why I have the QR code. I'll leave that up there for a second if you wanna uh, scan it. Okay. so. Um, for the latter half of the talk, I'll briefly show some of the assignments from uh, the English Gym Digital Workbook, but mainly I'll focus on just one assignment type, the uh, audio uh, recording assignment. Paul talked about this briefly, but um, this, is, this is for me, this is like the holy grail. This is it for out of class um, activities. And if you set it up correctly or in a certain way, um, you'll get a lot of output from the students and you'll save hundreds of hours of marking time and the students will benefit greatly and the student and, and teacher will also benefit greatly um, if you set it up in a certain way. So I hope you get excited about audio recording assignments. <laughs> it doesn't sound very uh, amazing, but um, I, I think it is. Okay, so let me um, get into it. And Paul has already gone over a lot of the features, so I won't re, re uh, go over them again. Um, and again, this is from a, a writer's perspective or a publisher's perspective, okay? And in my case, this is a digital workbook and it accompanies a physical workbook. So students have a physical workbook and this is kind of a supplement to that. And this has been really um, an interesting journey. I started working with uh, Zeng Gango about six months ago and he's got a team of um, experts. <laughs> and um, we went back and forth for, for many months, especially over the summer. And uh, the ideas came from teachers who use my book and my ideas and Paul's ideas and everybody had you know, different perspectives, but we put it together all teachers um, from a teacher's perspective. So this should really help teachers and understand um, the, the needs of teachers. So I think it's a really good package. And uh, I hope uh, people who use my textbook will, will enjoy using the digital workbook as well. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of the backstory. Uh, about four years ago, I published the textbook. And initially, I always wanted to have a digital version. And I talked to some IT guys, and I, I was approached by a couple of companies, but I could never find a platform that had everything that I wanted. And when I saw Paul's platform about a year ago, there were a lot of green lights, bing, 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 <laughs> good, good, good. So I was like, I'm going to use this. So, um, I contacted Paul and we started uh, working uh, working together. But I want to go to a different platform first to tell you why why this platform. Though everyone is probably very familiar with it, there's a there's a fatal flaw to this for language learners, and some teachers may realize this um, and ignore it, or maybe give up and they can't figure out how to get around this fatal flaw. And other teachers, maybe they don't even realize the problem. So this is the problem. <laughs> this is a screenshot from my Google Classroom. 
uh, you know, I designed it, I made it, it looks all fine, normal, right? And this is what my students in Japan see. Do you see the difference? It's very subtle. The menus have changed from English, that's my original, to the Japanese, because whatever the students are using in their native uh, default, um, you know, login, that's what the menus will look like. And this is what other students' screens look like. It's all in Japanese, 95% <laughs> all in Japanese. That's because of Google Translate. Students can just right click and boom, it looks like this. And I've seen this time and time again. When I ask students to screen share, if they're having a problem, show me your screen. Well, I'm in a Zoom class and I'll see my lesson is a Japanese lesson. It's supposed to be an English lesson. And, or even in the classroom before COVID, when I'd walk around, the students would have their phones out. My lesson's there. My lesson has been translated into Japanese, my English lesson. So um, if you make Google Forms, right? This is what I made. This is what many of your students will see. It's completely in Japanese, right? This is my original question. I spent hours, months, days making all these forms. And this is what the students see, all right? And it's just a total waste of time and effort. Now, some teachers may not realize that this is what their students are seeing. Not all the students, but enough of them. So it's really frustrating, right? So I saw uh, Paul's program or application. And it had the same thing. So whenever I get to a new application, I always try to translate. I try to cheat like a, like a student would do. Right click, everything's in Japanese. And I, I sent a message to Paul. I talked to Paul. I said, this is either a deal maker or a deal breaker. <laughs> and I said, can you put in some code to prevent students from translating autom everything automatically? And I know the code is out there. I've talked to other IT people. You can do it. And you know, Paul said, all right, give me five minutes. Blink, 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 blink. And then said, okay, try it again. And now this is what you get. <laughs> this is what the students see. Okay, if they're on a browser like Chrome or Firefox or Safari or any of the major browsers, it's really hard for them to get out of the English bubble. And that's, I, you know, in the classroom, I can control the language, but outside the classroom, I have no control of them. But with this, it's kind of like an invisible hand keeping the students inside that English zone. And I was like, okay, that took you five minutes to do. I'm in all the way. <laughs> so I spent the next four or five months working on this digital platform because I knew this was a great company and, and he could really help me uh, fulfill my vision as a, as a creator, okay? And I think Paul mentioned this as well in the writing assignment, if you toggle copy and paste disabled, students can go outside, copy and paste, you know, use some Deeple translation software and then paste it into their homework, they're done, right? They can't select, they can't copy, they can't paste. It's really hard for them to cheat. Not impossible, but really, really hard. And I think 99% of the students, they won't have the tech skills to do it. So great for language teachers, fantastic. Okay, so I'm just gonna call them, they're stuck in English. <laughs> um, they can't do any of these things. And the teacher, that's me or you, super happy, okay? And, and, and I know this, because the scores are not perfect. You know, the, the, the scores are within a range. So they're, they're doing the English work. Okay, so uh, four months and 200 assignments later, we had a complete digital workbook. And right now it's in the field testing with about 500 students. So it'll come to market in the spring of this uh, next year. Uh, this is uh, the outline of the one of the units. And I only used five of, Paul's different assignment types, but um, you can try these out actually on my website. So if you want to try out each lesson, you can do a, a sneak peek on the website there. Okay, but this is the one that I wa really want to focus on. It's the audio recording assignments, okay? And it's just two simple steps. One, they need to record their voice, and two, 
they type in a, a transcript of their voice. And when they, when they type in the transcript, I encourage them to uh, type a better version, an improved version. So this has a lot of educational value uh, in and of itself. But um, let's just go on to you. From the textbook, you can see the image here. This is unit 14. It's about part-time jobs. And this is for very low level uh, students. So you can see the questions are rather simple. But they get a prompt of five questions and they need to uh, give their personal answer. So they can't just copy and paste some answer. They have to give their real opinion. They're talking about their real lives. And I thought five questions was a good amount um, for, one, for one assignment. Uh, there are actually two assignments. So they have 10 questions in total. And you'll notice I've circled the pause button. And when Paul first had this, there was no pause button. And from a user's point of view, a student's point of view, I think for this type of assignment, a pause button is really necessary. So they can pause, they can think about what they're going to say, and then they can say it. So they pause, think, talk, pause, think, talk. And for low level learners, this is really gonna be uh, much more user friendly. Okay, and if you are a content creator, if, you're, if you want to make like a digital workbook on this platform, um, you can. I suggest, you know, uh, arranging it in this way. You check the pause box, you have a time limit, let's say five minutes. Um, you have the transcript on, so they have to type what they say. You have a minimum word count of 10 words, so they have to type something. And then you have your target word count of 50, for example, for this assignment. And finally, you have the grammar check on. So if you have all of these things, check, 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 um, you're gonna get something that looks like this. And this is a detailed view. You, most of the time, I don't even look at this. I just see the number 74. The, the, the AI or the app or I don't know, something, it scores this. Students get a score, which is amazing. Um, and you can see this student didn't put in much effort, so they only got 74%, but they did something so they can pass. And you'll notice the two numbers on the bottom, those are for grammar mistakes or punctuation or spelling. Um, I've highlighted one of them here. This student um, didn't use the infinitive form to watch. So the students get automatic feedback from the AI, right? And they wrote more than 50 words, so they get 100%. So it's forgiving. It's like, a vanilla, it's, it's really like, it's a nice kind of AI. It's got a heart, it's forgiving to the students. So they, even if with some mistakes, it's comprehensible, they still get full credit. So imagine this, I have 200 students. They do 20 to 30 sentences per student. That's 4,000 to 6,000 sentences a unit times 20 units a year. This is co correcting and giving feedback to 80,000 to 120,000 sentences. That is amazing. That's a mic drop. That is, that is the bee's knees. I'm so happy about this because I could never do it. You know, I, I've, I've got a lot of other things to do than by checking sentence by sentence, giving feedback. So this is like, this is the power of technology right here. If nothing else, it's right here. So um, it's a fantastic program and I'm just, I'm so happy I've, I found it. <laughs> and uh, I'm so happy I actually, I worked with Paul because you know I had lots of um, feedback from my teachers and we worked together and we developed this uh, to really help teachers really in, you know, harness that power of technology. So this is one of them. Um, this is a good example. Um, and you can just look at the wavelength, the audio wave file, you can see they've got five distinct answers. And they've got a couple of errors, but still 100%. So I'm gonna play a short clip from this student. This is my, one of my actual students from just maybe a week ago. I'll play a little bit. Uh, I, I wonder if my audio is, is hooked up, I wonder. Uh, let's play it and see. I work at Mr. Donut. I recently started working there. It's pretty fun. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but you can you can listen to them if you want to, and it's great once in a while, um, but um, I wouldn't do that every week. <laughs> it's a lot, it's uh, over 100,000 know, sentences, it's a lot. So it's an amazing tool to get students to do a lot of work 
and you know get this educational benefit every week and the teacher they can just see a number and it's working the students are learning so it's it's fantastic and these two things that i talked about uh the google or the translation that's been bubbled off or blocked off and the little pause button those are those are invisible so those things they don't even notice that they're there and if i hadn't told you you wouldn't have noticed they're there either <laughs> And that's what's great about this technology is that you don't even see it. You don't even notice it. And it just makes the whole experience easy for the students. It's really fantastic. So um, I guess my time is up, but if you are, if you are teaching in Japan, <laughs> you want a good textbook, please check this out. If you are a content creator and you wanna create your own content, um, please talk to Paul. And the thing is, this is a reversed, a business model so that um, teachers pay nothing if they are using, for example, if they have their students buy the digital workbook, which is at a very low price, um, then the teachers get access for free. And it's, 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 it's a win-win situation, I think. 